Hi, hello, it's Dennis. I'm the artist behind Archimi, and welcome back, or welcome if you're new. I'm a clay artist from the Philippines, and I've been making clay figures for more than two years now. And one of the things that I enjoy about crafting with air dry clay is that you can easily work on it with acrylic paints and other painting mediums. That's why I love hand painting details on most of my artworks. For my very first tutorial, I'll be showing you how I hand paint anime eyes on clay using acrylic paints. But before we start, just to let you know, I am no professional. The things that I'll be sharing today are techniques that I've learned through research, self-study, and trial and errors. I'm also not telling you guys that this is the only and best way to hand paint eyes, it's just that this method is the one that works for me best. So feel free to use this as a guideline and who knows, it might work for you as well. And besides, there are no rules in art so don't be afraid to experiment further from what you will learn today. You won't probably believe me but I also struggled when I was starting. I can get the right eye shape and it was all too messy up until I apply a technique that I've learned when I was studying digital art so let me discuss it further. So I have here a sample of an anime eye in Sojo style. But what I want you guys to focus on are the following four major eye parts. I label them for you, red for the upper eyelid, green for the bottom, we have iris in blue, and then yellow for the corner of the eye. Watch as I color the rest of the lines in purple. Now if we're gonna remove them, what we have is your basic eye shape. So when you're painting or drawing, these four major parts should always be present and will serve as a base on which later on you can just easily add lines to add additional details and uniqueness to the eye. By the way, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you like it, subscribe down below, click the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post. I have here a colored pencil. I normally get the shade close to the base color of the eye, so I'm now starting to draw the outline. Keep in mind the four major eye parts that we discussed earlier. So I started off with the upper eyelid, now the bottom eyelid, the corner, then later on the pupil. You can also use a regular lead pencil. I just chose a colored pencil because they easily blend in with colors and lead is just too dark for me. I have here a purple colored pencil because I'm eyeing to get a blue eye on the left and then brown on the right just to show you variation. What is good about with the face mold that I've used here is that you can just easily trace um, the position where the eye goes. But if you're not using the same type of face molder, just make sure that the space in between the left and the right is the same size of an eye. We'll be using water-based acrylic paints and these are basic colors where you can easily find in sets or individual tubes. Since we're going for a white brown eye, I'll be using burnt sienna, burnt amber, and cadmium yellow. You can add some water to your paint so it will flow easily on the surface of the clay. I'm using here a triple zero fine brush. I always have a piece of watercolor paper just to test the flow of the paint before applying it on the clay. I'm making an almond shape line for the upper eyelid. 
then followed by a small line for the corner of the eye. The corner of the eye can sometimes be omitted, but you can add this to create more depth and somehow give your eye more a realistic feel. I'm using a watercolor brush to wet the part where the iris will go. With this technique, you can easily spread out the paint and this will give you somehow a watercolor or an ombre effect. I'm using cadmium yellow as the color base. and then burn sienna for the darker shade. Paint the upper part of the iris with a darker shade. You can start adding the shadow under the eyelid using gray. Then color the rest of the inside eye using white. I'm mixing burnt amber with burnt sienna and start lining the iris. Paint the pupil of the eye using the same color. 
and if you will notice here I did not use black this is only my preference though because I find it dull that's why I normally go with the shades of brown dark blue or purple Here I added a bit of white just to add highlight at the bottom of the eye. Using the mix of burnt amber and burnt sienna, I'm adding a thin line for the bottom eyelid. You can also connect this line to the corner of the eye to make an almond or cat shaped eye. Adding highlights is one of my favorite, but I sometimes overdo it. That's why I normally limit myself to a one big dot and then two small ones. Here you go, so we're done with the right eye and here's the color palette that I've used. For the left eye, I'm using Payne's Gray for the outline. I'm using a different brush this time that I got from a local art store. Do not limit yourself on using an almond shape for the upper eyelid. It can also be straight, round, or angular, really depending on your character. We'll be using cyan or blue for our base color. Since we're using a small amount of paint, it dries up easily, so adding water beforehand can save you a lot of time and avoid cracking as well. Here I'm mixing cyan with white. Irises can be round, oval, or with very thin or flat line. You can try to play around with it because it's pretty much anything. I'm applying a darker shade of blue on the upper iris. I'm 
I was not happy with the shape of the iris here so I just grab a toothpick and cover it with web wipe and just clean around the edges of the iris. Besides grey, I also use pink, a reddish skin tone, and this will give dimension to your eye so it will not look flat or dead. To emphasize the roundness of the iris, I'm applying a darker blue for the lighting. I'm using pink this time to complement blue. Blue and pink are complementary colors so that means that your blue will be more bluer or your pink will look more pinker if they will be used together. To give variations to your eye, it's beneficial if you have knowledge with color harmonies. You can start with learning like color wheels or you can just search color harmony. Besides making dots, you can also use stars or heart shapes for your highlights. Once dry, you can also use gloss or nail polish with glitter to add more effect. Here you go, here's your basic anime eyes. All you have to do is to add line for the double eyelid and then the eyebrows. And it was easy, right? But we're not done yet, I'll be showing you how to make your eyes more detailed and unique. The art style that I'm using is Moe Moe or Moe Eyes. They're mainly used for characters, normally females in anime, manga, video games, and other media directed to otaku market. Popular Moe characters are Usagi from Sailor Moon, 
Lucy from Fairy Tail, Sakura of Card Character Sakura, and the other magical girls. For the brown eye, I'm going more masculine, so I just made a straight line and made the corner eye thicker. Male eyes tends to be much smaller and uses straight lines compared to female eyes. Partnered with thick brows, it will make your eyes more masculine. I'm making the blue eye a female eye, so I added more eyelashes and curved lines to make it more feminine. Studying the character and adding those extra details that makes them unique will make a big difference to your anime eyes. And we are done! Um, it might look weird because the eyes doesn't match but here are some edits. We have here your female and male anime eyes. I filmed the face painting a couple of months ago and here's my progress now. Things like this are something that you cannot easily learn overnight so try to be more patient. Be more consistent as well on practicing because if you form good habits, the more you maximize the results. And do not lose focus. If you apply your focus and energy into one thing, the more you likely succeed. I had so much fun and hope you guys liked it. We really put a lot of effort on making this video and it will be helpful if you can leave comments for improvement or any suggestions of what you would like to see next. Thank you and goodbye. It's Dennis. See you next time.